everybody. Happy holiday. My cousin and I, we're about to go and have a good time. I'll show you later what I cook and what I made. I just want to say, if you're a person every day that stares at your, sc- your screen and iPhone, don't pay people no mind. Because these same people that's so judgmental and think they know it all, they're hurt. Let's not say hurt people, hurt people. That's number one. How about help people, help people? Because you give people an excuse. To, when, after I say this, you make this statement. Because when you say hurt people, hurt people, we're giving an excuse for people to carry that destructive pattern. Add something to that. It's help people, help people. My cousin Pete want to say something. Hello, uh, I'm out there in YouTube land. How y'all doing? God bless you on this holiday. I'm going to definitely add something to that. The spiritual side. Stop saying hurt people, hurt people. Go ahead. Because see, when Jesus Christ walked this earth, did he hurt people? No. He ministered to so many people and he helped people. And that's what he wants us to do even here in the 21st century. He wants to help people, not hurt people. You know what my late mother used to say? And, and, and she was, and I've learned to be that way too. My late mother, if she couldn't help you, she wouldn't hurt you. My sister who passed last year of breast cancer, if she couldn't help you, she wouldn't hurt you. And I'm the same way. And we all need to be that way. Let's help one another, not hurt one another. Because that's what Jesus Christ did. He helped everybody on, on this earth. He ministered to so many people and helped them. And we should do the same. And another thing I want to add. If anybody say, why are you looking at your iPhone all day or screen phone? At least you're not staring at nobody. Because there used to be a time, what the F are you looking at? Or why are you saying hi to me? Don't pay these rude people no mind. They're miserable. And I'm and get away from miserable people. At least one thing about the internet age, you can learn how to read better, have more comprehend of studying other people's culture. Now, and the reason why y'all want to... You ever heard this expression, if you want to hide something hiding in a book? How about people don't read a book because of all that big words? How about all this way of looking down somebody? How about y'all generations before... I mean, how about y'all generations before y'all made it where you don't want other people to fit in and know what you're doing? And how about the government have a conspiracy that don't want people to fit in and feel balanced and neutral? No, social media... This is the reason why they say social media and media. Think about the word social media and think about... Forget social for a minute. Think about media. Media means the middle. A way for everybody to relax. Have it in between. Something you didn't know about this or that, you can find out and research. Not all this, hey, what you doing, tall person? Hey, you fat person, lose weight. Hey, you skinny person, you're this. You should look like this. There is no one more look no more. People had this way of get, of having one way of thinking, and that's impossible. Add something to that. Of this negative one way thinking. Of people looking at the social media all day. Well, you know, but one thing I've learned, and I've found out too, that this social media, you know, it's educational. It, it, yes, it's, 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 it is educational. And like I've looked up some information on the internet where you know, where years ago, back in the eighties, we had to go to the library and look up an encyclopedia. But that time has changed, and God gave man the wisdom to help uh, look up on the internet to, to invent the internet where we can join the privacy of our home. Yeah. But, but but I will say this: um, social media can be very addictive too. We got to be careful. Yeah, balance it. All I'm saying is. Educate yourself. Because some, if, because one time I was on it, and I had, and I had like said, "Lord, help me to get away from it," because I didn't want to almost like be on late for five and six hours. But thank you, never that long. But like almost out, it's very addictive. Mm-hmm. You got know, to, like you said, balance it out. Make sure you know have time to do other things. Have time at least, and, and the spiritual side have time to pray and go talk to God, like I do. Exactly. Like today, I just got done taking a walk. You know what I'm going to do is. Why before I take another walk and dress up because I'll show you what I'm wearing later you know I'm going to take the time to re- relax write my book and not give up because guess what people everybody want to feel like they can be reached not you keep going around and saying mean things and doing mean things to people you don't do that and people that used to be bullies you got to realize the reason why things bit you in the ass because you are fed poison emotional psychological spiritual poison that's unhealthy that's going to kill you and derail you and you and you having this one way of thinking it's going to get you knocked it's going to get you spiritually knocked down See what goes up must come down. You go ahead. And, and the Bible says too that you reap what you sow. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, "Be not deceived. God is not mine for whatsoever man sow, this, this shall he also reap." We gotta be careful how we treat people, how we do things, because it will come back. And before you call someone you reap what you sow. And before you call someone ignorant, you're ignorant because you're being judgmental to other people that don't see things the way you do. And then also, the re- social media is the big friend and big brother and big sister to everybody that don't feel like they're welcome. Because a lot of people, when people try to be friendly, why are you being friendly to me? Why are you being nice to me? See, that mentality right there is ugly. People don't think without speaking, and you need to. But time is up for everybody. People, time is up for this negative mentality where you think everything's where the line's going to be always standing for you. Why You need to ask yourself, why are you worth for people to get your attention? Why are you worth for people to stand in line for you? Why are you worth for people to give their things and money and benefits to you? That last $10 they gave you, they could have took that, instead of them 
taking that money to get some food or the bills. They're taking that to support you, but you're looking down on them. How about, you know, why you want everybody to praise you being, why you're so sexy, why you're so cute, why you did that movie? How about you need to be grateful that you got people standing for you? Not you acting like you're entitled, because even me, when I put stuff out, I want people to realize, before you, before you think about support me, Look at it. Give you know. Look at why you need to support me. Look at what I'm putting out to make you reach the support me that can reach you. We're here to be a duality to each other, all of us. Go ahead, add some to that. Oh, that, and, oh yeah, I gotta add. Here's another spiritual side to it. Why not be friendly? Because and, and here's the spiritual side. When Jesus Christ walked this earth, he called us friends. That's right. Mm -hmm. And he wants, you know, and he always, and we always talk about in my church the love of God. Always show the love, the love of God. Jesus Christ was full of love and, and, and called us friends while he walked through, and like I said, ministered. So we should do the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Why can't I? You know, so I'm, I, was, I was always naturally friendly. And another thing, I'm. And spiritually, the love of God, yes. And another okay. thing, where does it say in the Bible that Jesus was married and laid around and had all these. Out of wet like kids. Where did it say in the Bible? See, y'all want to cherry pick the Bible. And you wonder why people get away from the Bible and get away from church because a lot of y'all hypocrites. Because a lot of y'all men and women are doing destructive things in church. Take it out. Add something. That I know you well, want see, to. Well, see, Jesus Christ uh, uh, had no sin in it because he was holy and perfect. There was no sin. So, of course, it's not in the Bible that Jesus Christ had all these, you know, got married and had all these babies because because he was, he was too perfect and too holy. That's right. And one more thing. What if domestic violence can end? This may sound strange. What if domestic violence can end if you give people a break instead of being something you're not? Because, again, to a lot of people that go to people, can you do this for me? Can you do this for people? Before you ask people to be a wish list, what are you giving back to them? How are you loving them? How are you making them feel like I'm here for you? I love you. Not all, can you be my Santa or can you be my savior? Again, we all need to moderate shit out here. Take it out, my, my brother Pete. Jesus Christ is our Savior. Mm -hmm. That's right. And he died without a pain to his name. Is born without a pain to his name. Died, so you don't have to be he rich died either. He died for our sins. He paid for the sins of the whole world. He took it up upon himself. And, he, and even though he didn't so have... we may live. Even though he wasn't a celebrity or famous or had money, he was still humble. So, so yeah. We so should a lot always of, be humble at the feet of Jesus. So a lot of y'all saying y'all want a rich, a rich person. Jesus died without being rich. He, he represents truth and power. He wasn't even born in a hotel. He would, According to the Bible, Jesus was born on a farm where animals are. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, according to the Bible, uh, 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 all the ends were filled, but they were, I can imagine, cows and chickens and sheep and goats. So he was born on a farm. That's how humble he was. My mother used to preach that too. He did that, you know, because it showed that how, hey, we need to be humble. Mm -hmm. Humble means to come down. Right. Humility. Yeah. Anything you want to say before I close it? The whole world needs to be humble, just like Jesus. Exactly. I, I've always had a humble spirit, and I've and I've still learned to, to keep myself humble at the feet of Jesus. And I'll encourage everybody there in YouTube land, just stay. <coughs> we got a little sore throat. Let's take your time. Stay humble at the feet of Jesus. When mm -hmm. you stay humble at His feet, God will do great things for you. I'm a witness, and I got a. And I won't say this, but I got a, a prayer request before God and before Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for God to answer it as we enter into the summertime season. But I'm going to stay humble at his feet. And as long as I remain humble at his feet, my prayer will be answered. And any of y'all out there in YouTube land, if you have any prayers, prayer requests, stay humble at his feet. You know they can't see your face. Can I just grab your hand and tell everybody this is this is my cousin? Just so you know, this is my cousin. This is a real person. This is my cousin. See? I'm not a robot. Yeah, as y'all can see, I'm this a human is my being. cousin. Yes. See? I just had to show y'all my cousin. Yes, yep. I'm a human being. Yeah, all right. I love y'all. God bless. God bless. Happy holiday.